Hi! In this video we are using Substance 3D Designer to make sand and dunes height maps. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. With the anisotropic noise node you generate a stretched noise with hard edges in one but smooth transitions in the other direction. With X and Y amount you control the noise line amount and proportions. The smoothness slider controls the transition between lines on the X axis. The non-uniform directional warp node is an advanced directional warp node that allows control over the angle through a custom map input, whereas multi-directional warp only uses parameters for it. This means that you can create advanced curving and trailing effect. Trail mode sets how the trails are blended. Trail length defines the length of the warp trails. Trail fade is used to control how each trail should fade out. Trail Curve sets how the fading effects behaves. Reaction Diffusion Fast node grows patterns in an organic way. Radius defines how far the effect spreads. Let's build this basic sand dune setup together. You can then use it as starting point for more complex materials. As base color we choose a yellow with an orange touch. Push the normal intensity to 12. Increase the roughness value to 170, add a RTAO with a height scale of 0.1 and add an auto levels node. We connect it to the normal RTAO and height channels. Let's further increase the height scale for the tessellation to 7 and the tessellation factor to 16. For this quick tip example we start with the anisotropic noise node. Push the Y amount to 160, rotate it and join it to the Auto Levels node. We connect it to Blur HQ Grayscale node to get the smooth long bass noise. To shrink the shapes we continue with a Slope Blur Grayscale node, increase the samples to 32 for smoother quality and tweak the intensity to minus 2. With an Auto Levels node we rearrange the values between 0 and 1. Let's carve the shapes with a non-uniform directional warp node. As intensity input we use a white grayscale uniform color node. Let's adjust the intensity to 100, warp angle to minus 30 and switch the trail mode to min. Adjusting the trail length is nice to define the shape. Let's use a value of 0.75. Now we duplicate the non-uniform directional warp node to carve it also to the other direction with a warp angle of 150. This really helps to get the sharp shapes. For some more wavy shapes we continue with a multi-directional warp node. We connect the auto levels to a transformation 2D node, rotate it 90 degrees for more horizontal deformation, use a blur HQ grayscale node to smooth it and connect it to the intensity input. Then we change the mode to chain for a stronger effect, switch the directions to 2 and push the intensity to 30. For more smaller details we connect it to another multidirectional warp node and use a clouds1 node as intensity input. When using the multidirectional warp instead of a directional warp node and warp in just one direction it stays in position. With a small intensity of 1.2 we get nice smaller details. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. You can save this setup and use it in another project or make a custom node out of it. Let's explore a bit more advanced setup of this tip. You can experiment with the noise inputs for this setup to achieve lots of different looks. I use a separate noise as input for the deformation for full control. Playing with the different trail settings of the non-uniform directional warp nodes helped to get different results. You can also experiment and blend some noises with the uniform color node. To control the sharpness of the dunes I blurred the shapes after the non-uniform directional warp nodes. To get even more control over the blur a non-uniform blur grayscale node with a custom mask is great. As sand grain structure I use the white noise fast node that is also blended into the roughness channel for more variation. Blending it over the default uniform color helped for more base color variation. Another way to do some wave details are reaction diffusion nodes in combination with directional noises. I blended two reaction diffusion nodes together with the subtract blending mode to get the base. I further deform it with a multidirectional warp node. 
different warping nodes could be used for more detailed deformations. Using the same non-uniform directional warp method helps to tweak the height curve. If you want to learn more, you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.